Today saw the announcement of the Master Chief Collection, henceforth known as the MCC, for the Xbox One, and it has since sent the community into a frenzy. However, we have since been bombarded with even more information and it can be very easy for fans to get confused. For your convenience, this is What We Know, the Master Chief Collection. So, where to start? Well, let's start with the trailer. I've already done something of a breakdown, but let's go over what we saw and what has been revealed since. To start, the cutscene that makes up the bulk of the trailer is likely the final cutscene. For Halo 2 Anniversary, 343 worked with Blur Studios, who made the Halo Wars cinematics, to update and completely overhaul Halo 2's cutscenes. Even better, it seems, is that Halo 2 Anniversary will allow us to switch between Classic and Anniversary while the cutscenes are playing. The power of the Xbox One in action, folks. Another prominent figure in the trailer was our mysterious new Spartan. His name is indeed Agent Locke, and if you recall, many of us lore nuts thought that he might be Marlowe from the Halo Digital series by Ridley Scott. As it turns out, Marlowe was in fact a codename of sorts 343 used while casting for the role. Based on the conversation in the trailer between him and the Arbiter, the mysterious Locke is looking for the Chief to avert some sort of coming crisis. As the Arbiter says, I tell you this, not because I trust you, Agent Locke. Because all our lives are at stake. Because the seeds of our future are sown in his past. Since the premiere of the trailer, it has been revealed that the updated Halo 2 campaign will include prologue and epilogue cinematics that tie into Halo 5 Guardians. I cannot help but think that the scenes with Locke and the Arbiter are part of these additions, but I'm sure that came to mind for you guys as well. Moving forward, we get a couple brief looks at the MCC's new UI, and boy, is it beautiful. During an interview with IGN, we were shown a comprehensive look at this UI, and and basically how it works, which is between different campaigns, multiplayer, lobbies, and other modes with ease. Now, not many people I know liked Halo 4's UI. I certainly did not. However, this new UI is slick and well-designed. Good on you, 343. The MCC will feature dozens of playlist options that will allow for quick and seamless transitions between different games. Going into a Slayer playlist, for example, you may get to vote between... Halo CE's Blood Gulch, Halo 2's Zanzibar, and Halo 3's Longshore. Whichever wins will be loaded up, no problem. While scrolling through the menus, we also got a glimpse of a few extras. Among them were Terminal Trailer and Blur Trailer, likely a couple items we might see in the near future before the game's launch. Along with these were the eventual access points for the Ridley Scott Digital series, known as Nightfall, and the Halo 5 Guardians beta. Later in the interview, we got our first look at Halo 2 Anniversary's campaign gameplay, and boy, it does not disappoint. We get a brief look at the new Cairo station, along with some hints at where skulls and terminals might be located. By which I mean very obvious looks at, right at them. They're right there. So if anyone was wondering if skulls and terminals would be back in Halo 2 Anniversary, such as myself, rest assured. The only question now is what sort of story these terminals will tell. I gotta admit, I'm almost more excited for that than anything else in this collection. As the gameplay goes on, we get our first look at the Anniversary enemies. Grunts look like their Reach and CEA counterparts, but the Elites kinda resemble their Halo 4 kin. It's hard to really see in the video as Cairo is a dark level and the Anniversary Edition doesn't really clear that up. Even some clearer footage I was able to get my hands on isn't quite definitive. Still, to me, the models look more like the Halo 2 Sankhili than Halo 4's, and the model seen in the visually remastered Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer look to resemble the 2004 counterparts. In the end, though, all this is still up for change before the final product is launched. Speaking of remastered multiplayer, let's take a look, shall we? Revealed during the Xbox Media Briefing, it features six reimagined maps with a new engine that recreates Halo 2's multiplayer. Now, don't, don't freak out, you will be able to play the original Halo 2 multiplayer, just not with the newer graphics. While we're on it, all four Halo games' respective multiplayers will be available in 1080p at 60 frames per second on dedicated servers. That means for the first time on console, 
Halo CE Online Multiplayer. In addition to standard PvP multiplayer, both Spartan Ops and Campaign will get their own playlists. The Campaign has a number of options ranging from a full marathon playthrough of all four games to select levels with a common theme, tank levels, warthog runs, etc. Like any good Halo game, the MCC will have split screen, two player local for Campaign and Spartan Ops, and four player for multiplayer modes. And of course, you'll be able to play with friends over Xbox Live, multiplayer, Spartan Ops, and of course, all four campaigns. Before we move on, let's also talk about ranks. It was a hot feature in Halo 2 and 3, and it will be returning for the MCC. According to Dan Ayub, 343 is working on a ranking system that will work across all four games, a single, unifying rank for a unified experience. A major subject that was brought up almost immediately after the reveal was the subject of Forge and Theater. Well, it turns out not only will Forge be returning in Halo 3 and 4, but it's been added to Halo 2. Now, the details of this Forge mode are completely unknown, but I'd imagine it's probably going to be pretty limited compared to Halo 4 or Halo 3. But, who knows? No details other than it will be included are known. On the theater side of things, we know the feature will return for the games that had it, but whether it will be added to other games and or expanded, I'm looking at you Halo 4 campaign and Spartan Ops, is unknown for now. A few more details also came to light during the IGN and other interviews. Sadly, the MCC will not include the Halo 2 demo from E3 2003. While 343 did try to get it in, the demo was way too buggy according to Frank O'Connor. He notes that if players deviated even slightly from the intended path, the whole thing would crash. It is also noted that everything is unlocked from the get-go. While we do know this includes campaign missions, Spartan Ops missions, and maps, including DLC, we don't know if that would include armor, weapons, etc., such as in Halo 3 and Halo 4. Hopefully we'll find out later this week. Finally, achievements. The game will ship with 4,000 gamer score. Sadly, we do not have an achievement list, nor do we know how many will be ported from the original games, and how many, if any, will be brand new. I will say, as long as we don't get Violent Cartographer or Rainmaker from Halo 2 Vista, or some of the dumber achievements from Halo 4, seriously, change your armor, make a game type, I think we'll be fine. So, I think that about sums up the Master Chief Collection, at least for now. Tomorrow's another day, and there's surely more to come. Stay tuned, Spartans. As always, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Also, please be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. All your support is extremely welcome. Thank you all.